Hey, folks. So, um, all right. So, uh, okay. It's, welcome, everyone. I uh, hope you're having a pleasant day. Um, so, a couple of things. Uh, I guess, uh, first off, uh, I enjoyed the discussion last time. Um, I thought that was really productive. Um, and, and I think almost everyone participated. So, that's always good. Um, and uh, you yeah, got some really interesting stuff. I think uh, there was, you know, we, we kind of um, ended up talking about a, a lot of stuff with regards to the sort of COVID, which I think is very, I mean, how, how COVID is affecting society and, and the technology associated, which I think is very apropos, both in terms of taking new geography of jobs and like, okay, you know, thinking about that main theme of technology influencing geography and then sort of maybe uh, using those tools to th and, and those topics to think about COVID um, and how, you know, uh, COVID is kind of causing changes in technology and also forcing us to use technology in different ways, uh, which are sort of reminiscent. Uh, well, they, they certainly relate to uh, the changes talked about in, in new geography, especially with regards to the internet and, and the, uh, you know, sort of decentralization of, of economic uh, activity and especially sort of formal work. Okay. Um, yeah, I think, I think there was at some point I, while I was looking at the video, there was, there was some point where I, I had, I was like, okay, I have this idea. And then I totally forgot it. I blanked on it, but I think what, it, you know, I, I was I, going back, I think I was, I was, um, one of the things I've been wondering about for a while is, is if you think about um, kind of the traditional Hollywood model uh, of movies, you know, you have actors that sort of they they well in the past they would they would kind of sign on with a studio, you know, and uh, and and make movies for them sort of on contract, um, and that that over time sort of decoupled, whereas more just like you have an actor and they sort of just sign on with anything. Um, but yeah, you, you certainly have this dynamic where people become very famous, right? Um, you have people scouting around for for sort of people that are I guess, good at acting or, you know, whatever, whatever they're looking for. Um, and, you know, people become very famous um, and, and you have a similar, you know, you, you can think about the world of streaming, whether it be on say YouTube or Twitch or wherever, um, uh, it's similar, but, but much more decentralized, right? Because essentially the barriers to entry drop enormously, right? So you can just, fire it up all you need is a you know streaming studio even i can mostly figure that out um and uh and you can you can start streaming wherever okay whereas uh you know hollywood you have to well you need to make a movie of some minimal repute i think at least to show up on on uh through formal channels right so um the various entry go way down um and so you see this totally different dynamic where so anyone can enter right and and, and one thing will you you might see a, a change in the composition of who becomes famous right and who is successful and who is able to monetize that um but you could you might also see a difference in what is produced who you know so you might see sort of uh much more diversity right in terms of the topic right what are people uh what types of things are, are people doing are they are they, are they, are they doing different stuff that's focused on video games on sort of the meta analysis of culture and things like that um and, and stuff that maybe like traditionally wouldn't show up in the mainstream Okay, um, so I think that's really interesting, and it kind of mirrors in a lot of ways what you see with happening with the media overall, right? Where you had a traditional system where you effectively had gatekeepers, say the major news networks, uh, major newspapers. So that would be like um, NBC, ABC, CBS, uh, eventually you know CNN, MSNBC as the news networks, um, and then on the newspaper side you have your major uh, national papers like uh, New York Times, Washington Post. Chicago Tribune and so on. Um, so you have the system where there's, you know, because it's it's costly to make a professionally professional grade news program or a major newspaper, um, and also to do the the reporting work, um, you, you end up with these big institutions, right? Um, but then with the internet, sort of the costs go way down. Okay, and so so you you get more entry, right? And you get different types of newspapers, and you might see more different types and and perhaps more viewpoints represented, right? So which of course for, you know, that's, you know, in the abstract, we think about that as good and, and, and it probably is in a lot of ways, but of course that many people argue that there can be downsides from uh, to just letting anyone 
uh, broadcast whatever they want, right? So it's a complicated uh, situation. I'm not going to necessarily weigh in either way, right? But um, you can see that, that, that you see that similar barriers to entry story, right? That the barriers to entry get lowered a lot. You get a new new entry. Um, the incumbents adapt or perish, basically. Uh, but you see you see a change in the ecosystem too, right? In terms of the final product, which is sort of like the video or the news or whatever that content that's produced is, right? So. Um, yeah, so I, I, yeah, I mean, anyway, that's just a kind of a thought that's been, I've been percolating for a while. Um, but I, I think also it, it kind of relates to what I want to talk about next. Okay. Which is mini project number two. Okay. I'm kind of short on time here. So mini project number two is going to be even more mini. Well, actually mini project number one wasn't really much of a mini project. That was per, perhaps a proper project. Uh, but this then would be a mini project, right? So this is going to be more like a, the first one was, you know, ten, roughly 10 pages. Uh, this one's going to be more like five pages. Okay. Um, so, but, but, uh, yeah, so what, but what I want you to do for that, okay. And I just kind of put it up on the website is, is look at a, a similar question, um, it, it, you know, for your own topic, which is, which is think about a particular technology. Okay. So just like with the, the first project, you came up with the country and then sort of analyzed it. I want you to, to choose a particular technology. Okay. Um, if you want, and actually, let me. Uh, let me let me show you the actual uh, what's on the web page. Okay, so yeah, so choose a particular technology. Um, you know, and it can be historic. So I'm, the examples I give here, so it could be historical, like a tele the telegraph or the steam engine or something like that. It can far historically, it could be the wheel for all you want. That would be a kind of interesting choice. Um, uh, or uh, an emerging technology, one that's coming around right now. Right, where people are talking, it's active, people are talking about it. So, you know, personal streaming, for lack of a better term, is what I'm trying to get at with this this uh, Twitch or YouTube stuff, uh, that whole thing, okay? Um, or it can be something that hasn't yet come to pass, but which we think may come to pass, which is, for instance, nuclear fusion, which is always sort of, has been on the, you know, a decade away for, for decades now, right? So, um, so pick something, pick a technology, okay? And then, uh, and then, and then analyze it, okay? Um, and what, what I want you to do is, uh, well, we want to understand where, you know, why did it arise? What were the forces that made it arise, both technological and political? What were the effects, okay, um, on society? Okay, which I'll get into more detail exactly what I mean by that. And what do we think are gonna, you know, what do we think, how, how is that gonna influence the evolution of society and technology in the future, okay? Um, and so first I want you to just give me, the, give me a, a plain overview of you know, what is technology, how does it work, well, the history of it, uh, sort of just straight up, okay? Um, I mean, you don't have to do this. This is a proposed structure, which still leads to a good amount of flexibility. So give me a description, first of all, of what you're talking about, okay? And then you can you can sort of go into the analysis part, and I think you can actually, you know, use all three of the, ma the major analytic frameworks that we've touched on uh, in the course so far, okay, to think about this, okay? So, um, you know, I sort of lay it out here, but basically in, in terms of, let me make this a little bigger so you guys can actually see what's going on sometimes. Let's try that. Okay, so in terms of um, the first one, you can, you can just do sort of the general growth accounting stuff that we've used. Um, and so, you know, here, uh, you know, just thinking about what, how, did, how does it fit in with sort of production in general? Okay, so is this, and, and what, because because when you say technology, I mean, technology is a fairly general term and it can it can mean a lot of different things. We talked about how technology can look a lot like human capital. Okay, so, you know, uh, so so that can be an issue, right? So, but but in, in this setting, you can say, okay, well, is it, is it, does it look like Z basically, right? Does it look like that first term that we have in the production function where it just makes the existing capital and labor that you have better, okay? Um, or maybe it's it's a little different. Maybe it's it's more like something like a, just a new type of human capital. Okay, so you could think about um, like a new. Uh, and the difference there is that it, a new type of human capital is something that people actually have to actively put in a lot of effort to learn, versus just sort of immediately adopt. Okay, so um, yeah, I, I don't know what it, you know. If you think about uh, the just generally the rise of software, I mean. Uh, it, it, you know, with the, 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 the creation of algorithms and everything like that, uh, advanced algorithms, you don't just automatically know it. I mean, you need to learn it. Okay. Um, and so that might, you might interpret that more as human capital. 
Okay, and then and then similarly with regular capital, I mean, it might, it might be that a new technology like a steam engine is just a new type of capital. So you, it's not like, oh, I had this engine and now I'm just going to make it a steam engine, whatever that means. It's like you need to like actually build the engine and everything like that. So so in that sense, it would look like a new type of capital, which is it's going to be slightly different. Okay, um, then you can also think about okay, is it more something that goes into like the solo world? where it just influences production today, or is it more something that influences how we improve technology over time? So is it more solo or is it more like Jones, the stuff that we did recently uh, with the production of new ideas, okay? Um, and then also you could, for instance, look at data, okay, and try and figure out, you do see a, a, an effect here, right? So you could, usually no single technology is gonna show up strongly in, in aggregate data, okay? so so. Uh, but maybe you could look at if you think there's a particular country that was particularly influenced by this, um, or if you think that uh, if you can look at ind industry level data, perhaps that could be useful. Okay, and I can help you out with that if if, if you're curious about that. Okay, um, that's a little harder to get at than 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 the Penworld tables, but it's certainly not impossible, and it's usually available if you want to look at a particular industry. That's usually available for for free somewhere. Okay, um, so that's that's sort of the standard growth analysis, uh, or growth accounting method. Okay. Um, uh, the, this, the next thing you can do is, is sort of a why nations fail analysis. Okay. And so this is where you sort of get into those questions of the, the political economic nexus. Okay. Because you're thinking about, well, you're thinking about kind of two things. You're thinking about why did this thing arise? Why did this technology arise and why did it do so when it did? Okay. Um, and then you're also thinking about who does it benefit? Who does it hurt? Okay. But those two questions are kind of linked, right? I mean, in the sense that we saw in my nation's fail, there were instances where there was a good technology that would benefit a lot of people, even most people, uh, but it was opposed or it would hurt incumbents in some way uh, or people in that have political power and they suppress the, the, either the creation or the development or the diffusion of that technology. Okay, so you can see how those two questions are actually kind of linked and, th and that goes through sort of this why nations fail framework of, of, of thinking about the incentives for the creation and diffusion of, of technology, okay? Um, the other thing you can do is, is look, look at, you know, think about their critical juncture stuff, right? You can think about, okay, well, did this technology induce a critical juncture, right? Did it somehow, um, put different countries on different paths, uh, uh, just by nature of some small differences in their initial conditions. Okay. So that's, you know, of course, not every technology is going to change the world, but, but perhaps, um, some will. Okay. Um, and then the other thing you can do is, which is kind of related to all this and sort of the, these questions of, of causality is, is think about this, the, what's called the counterfactual, which is well, what, what would have happened if this technology hadn't come about either at all or, or precisely when it did, right? So, um, you know, like, uh, you know, you get, I don't know if you guys have, have seen, there's this, there's these various sort of like speculative fiction categories, like steampunk, if you've heard of that, where it's like, they write stories about what would have happened if like, we didn't develop advanced, you know, like uh, semiconductors in the internet, or, or if we didn't develop, um, you know, the, the gasoline engines, and things like that. And, and we just, everything was like steam powered and we were all like flying around on steam powered blimps or something, which would be cool. Uh, but also obviously would entail some inefficiency or it w we wouldn't be as productive, right? So, um, you know, the counterfactual, what, what would have happened, you know, if, if certain technologies hadn't been developed or if your technology hadn't been developed, okay? So it's interesting to think of because it also tells you, it, it sort of prompts you to think about how this technology influenced the course of events, okay? Um, and sometimes it's hard because, you know, a lot of times it, you know, you, you, you might think that the development of this, your technology is just sort of inevitable. Okay, um, and, and maybe it is in some cases, right? Or maybe it's inevitable that something like that technology would come about. Okay, so, um, but it, but I, so there's no right answer there, but it's an interesting way to 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 think about um, the effects by considering what would have happened had this not come about. Okay, um, and the last thing is uh, new geography of jobs. Okay, so that sort of framework, which is more looking at sort of the heterogeneous effects of technology. Okay. Um, so that's focused mostly on the U.S., but of course you can you can apply that type of analysis to, to anywhere. Um, and so, in, in here we're thinking about you know what what are the differential impacts across space, across different areas in terms of geography or industries, okay, which are correlated, right? Because industries agglomerate uh, across different types of workers, high education, low education, or different types of skill workers, okay, um, and stuff like that. 
All right. Uh, so you can look at the heterogeneous effects, and then you can also look at more specifically to geography. You can see, okay, well, did this technology lead to changes in the, the distribution of how people where, where people live and where they work? Okay, um, did it change? Did it change population density? Did it change the nature of cities or the rationale for cities and, and things like that? Okay, so um, you know, you and so the, usually, I mean, a, a lot of technologies will do this. So if you think about like an older technology, say like the telegraph that facilitated rapid, relatively rapid communication, okay, which, you know, of course, that's going to have different implications for, for if, you, if you think, okay, am I going to move to the, the Great Plains, you know, so, so the telegraph, by the way, it came around about, you know, 1840 or so, that's when it started becoming popular in the US, um, a, lot, a lot of ways piggybacked on, on, I think, existing rail lines, but, um, you know, that, that changes, you know, if you, if you think I'm going to move to the Great Plains, well, you're going to be, you're at least going to be able to get the news in a timely fashion. You get, <clears throat> you'll be able to get prices uh, uh, more quickly. Okay. So it'll change sort of the calculation, say, if you want to think about move some, moving somewhere. Um, and then also it's like, as a producer, it changes, you know, you, you can know more quickly where is corn in demand? Is, is there a corn glut or, or whatever, or whatever you're growing is, it, what are the prices looking like? So you get more information, um, but then also it's like, it's going to influence bunch of other stuff it'll influence obviously it influenced military campaigns right communication is super important there you if you've seen this was a while ago actually now but they, like the movie lincoln like the telegraph was like dramatically featured in, in that um and obviously it's, it's important uh was important for the civil war and things like that so um and it's important for like the media uh, like the associated press was created more or less in response to the telegraph okay because they were like okay well we have this expensive telegraph let's all just share it and like transmitter articles over that okay so um, there's a lot of different effects for just something that's so simple. Well, not simple, but like kind of at this point antiquated, like the telegraph. Um, and you can do that analysis for anything, right? So, but but most of the time there's some geographic component, okay? Uh, and then, on, yeah, and then the last thing you can look at is, it's just um, thinking about policies. Okay, so what were their policies that were designed to mitigate some of these effects? If, if such effects were needed to be mitigated um, or not... Or instead of were there, you know, could there have been, um, and things like that. Okay, so uh, the, those are the kind of approaches you can take. Okay, and and um, so that's you know those, those I think are just sort of good things to keep in mind. Okay, and they 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 build on stuff that we've done in the course. Uh, but of course, you can do. I mean, you can take whatever approach you want. I'm not going to stop you. Uh, but I think those are those are generally pretty useful. Okay. Um, all right, so then, uh, yeah, so that's that's project that's going to be due on twenty seventh. Okay, terms running out pretty quickly here, so because um, I think we have we have basically two more weeks and then an exam week. Okay, so most of you are seniors, right? So my major constraint is I need you to get this to me so that I can grade it relatively quickly and give you a grade so that you can graduate. Okay, you're going to graduate. Uh, so I, don't worry about the grade. Just I need to like actually grade it and get all the grades in on time. Okay, so um, yeah, that's that's basically my constraint for for the the timing of the due date. Okay, um, and then yeah, and then five pages, like try and do like roughly one page of figures. However, you want to arrange that. Okay, so so it's so like twenty percent figures, uh, uh, or more or less. Okay. Um, and then like five pages, so so five pages overall, including those figures. Just like don't have, don't 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 fill the space with figures. I've I've, I've made this spiel before. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Okay, uh, and, I, and this is up on the website. This this document right here. Okay, and uh, yeah. So let me know if you have any questions about that. Um, uh, we're gonna uh, continue on with what we were. We I think well. I, I might have mentioned it at the end of last class, perhaps, perhaps it was before uh, two lessons ago on Tuesday, but um, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna continue on with a little bit of theory, okay? Um, and this is uh, theory due to most well due to a bunch of people, but but uh, one of the first uh, progenitors was was Paul Romer, okay? Um, so this and this is a basically a, a way to think about um, ideas as as goods, okay? So this is gonna be uh, model. It's it's actually you know it's 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 going to end up looking like um, solo in certain ways. It will see and sort of a twist at the end. Um, but but the we're gonna we're gonna sort of in, in 
in doing this, we're going to endogenize technical technical change. Okay, so we're going to basically have a dynamic where um, people are investing in research. Okay, and that research uh, sort of probabilistically creates new products. Okay, so you, you try and come up with a new idea. Sometimes you succeed, sometimes you don't. Uh, but over time, that's going to build up more and more new products. Okay, um, and that's going to lead to growth that we'll see in a particular way. Okay, because you know you have more and more products. Okay, and so you have a, just more and more variety of different types of goods. Okay, and that's one way you can think about uh, growth. Okay, there's there's kind of there's, there's there's two major ways you can think about growth. One is new types of goods, um, new ways basically to use inputs to generate output. Okay, um, or you can think about it more as like okay, we're we're making the same goods but more cheaply. Okay, uh, which is you're so you're, you're still you're producing more with the same amount of input still, but it's a different interpretation. Okay. Um, so here, here we're going to go with the, the variety component. Okay. And, you know, if you look at growth, I mean, a lot of the goods that we consume that are most important for technological change are, uh, uh new goods. Okay. So, I mean, like, uh, I guess smartphones are the, the most prominent example of a new good, but, you know, computers in general are, are only decades old and things like that. Um, and then if you think about more sort of abstract types of goods, um, knowledge goods and things like that, they're sort of constantly coming, coming, uh, into, into, uh, we're, we're constantly creating new types of knowledge goods. Okay, so um, <clears throat> that's going to be the dynamic. Okay, um, and this 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 will this will be in the slides. Okay, let me maximize that. So this will be in the slides. Okay, uh, ideas as goods. Okay, and and basically what we're going to do is is we're going to look at a microfounded uh, uh, model here. Okay, so we're going to think about sort of individual firms producing individual goods. Okay, and individual researchers doing research and and essentially coming up with ideas and starting new goods based around those ideas, uh, starting new firms based around those ideas, okay? Um, and then we're gonna map, we're gonna kind of look at those micro level incentives and that's gonna lead to some macro level outcome, okay? And that's a pretty common approach uh, in macro today, okay, is to, to what's called micro foundations, okay? Um, because you know, at the end of the day, that's, what, that's actually closer to what happens, okay? You don't have just a whole economies making decisions and, and things like that. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so, so we're going to do this, this Romer model. Okay. Um, and in a, in a second, I'll, I'll probably jump on to uh, writing things up by hand on the iPad, but um, I guess I can show you, I can start out here. Uh, but basically as with a lot of our uh, the stuff that we're doing, I mean, the, the, the first thing we do is write down a production function because that is sort of the most de important determinant of, the outcome of the model, which is what, how, how are we making things, right? So what, what do we use to make them? You know, what do we make at the end? What's the final output? And, and how does that process work? That determines what's possible. It determines the, a lot of the incentives of the, not all. Okay. So, so this will be number one, the important thing. And then the other major important thing will be the, not the production function for goods, but the production function for new ideas. Okay. Uh, and so those two, the, the goods production function and the idea production functions together will, will kind of give us the whole, almost the whole story. Okay. There are some other assumptions embedded here and there, but that's going to be most of the story. Okay. So this is our production function here. And, and basically we're doing, okay. So this is different. It's a little bit more complicated than, I mean, obviously it's more complicated than the solo, uh, 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 model that, that, you know, why we, before we, we had like, why was K to the alpha times L to the one minus alpha. Okay, this is reminiscent, right? You can see there are common elements, right? We still have alpha. And in fact, we still have L to the one minus alpha. So it's a labor, it's sort of a part of what's going on here in producing final output. And we still have something to the alpha, but now instead of K, it's this integral over these different X sides. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, now instead of um, sort of just one aggregated kind of capital that we just sort of utilize, like it's some giant factory, uh, we are thinking about things more at a micro level and then aggregating them. Okay, so there's, there's, uh, and here's where we're gonna switch over to the notes. Basically, you know, so we, we have, let me just write down the production function here so we have it handy. L to the one minus alpha times the integral from zero to A, X, I to the alpha, DI, okay? Right, and sort of, and, and, and in the background, Okay, what, you know, what's happening, okay, is instead of 
just using instead of taking labor in this this whole aggregated capital stack uh and uh you know producing um final output what we're, we're actually doing is is splitting capital amongst a bunch of different firms okay which which you know is clearly more realistic okay so so you know this we're we're doing this integral here right over i so so this i right when and this is sort of the mathematical notation it ranges between zero and a right so there's there's a whole range of goods you know or if you, if you want to think about it like this you know there's some whole you know continuous range of goods between zero and a okay and each point on here is some, is some random you know some individual product okay and in, and in fact this this a is going to be increasing over time as, as people create new goods so that's going to be driving growth okay so each i in that integral is an individual product and we're kind of assuming that each individual product is produced by an individual firm okay so so there's there's uh things that are fairly competitive okay but but actually that firm itself is a monopolist at producing that very specific good but there are many different types of goods right so so there's each firm is a monopolist, but because there's so many different types of goods, I mean, if, if you don't like good I, you can consume good J instead, and it might almost be almost as good. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's sort of the the dynamic. Okay, and then uh, you know, so and then well, so what 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 is the deal with capital? Okay, well then basically what happens is uh, what's a good way to write this? So so we we do have some total. You can think about some total amount of capital. Which I'm going to call a capital or up, you know, capital K, right? That's a capital K. Um, it's it's going to get split, okay, into this is this is how I'm going to draw it. It's going to it's going to get split into uh, all these XJ, so like XI, XJ, whatever, from from zero day. So so we're taking capital. We have you know a total amount of machines, and we're 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 splitting them amongst a bunch of different um, firms. Okay, then we're sort of, you know, we're producing stuff at those firms. Okay, um, we're producing some output there, and we also have labor. Don't forget about labor. We're gonna sort of team up with capital at all these different firms, and that's what's gonna produce output. Okay, so, you know, in the original solo model, I would have just written K, L, arrows pointing down to Y. Very simple game, and it's sort of mediated by alpha. Now we're taking K. Okay, okay, this firm needs some capital. Maybe it's land. Maybe it's a factory. Maybe it's just a building. This firm needs some capital. That firm needs some capital. They run their machines. They produce stuff. They combine that with labor, people to run the machines, basically, and people to distribute the goods, uh, and that produces final output Y. Okay, so it, it's. I mean, it's a similar thing, but we're, we're sort of adding in a, a bunch of middlemen. Middle people, right? And uh, there, there, it turns out that that's that's important. That that micro foundation is important because we need to think about um, well, we need to think about uh, uh, this growth component, how how we're creating new goods, and what are the incentives for that? Okay, um, <clears throat> yeah. And so, well, you might think, well, why why would we add these middle people? Why not just take capital and combine it with L and produce output like we did before? Why are we why are we messing things up and make them more complicated? Um, well, we're not really you know the real world is complicated, right? So we're not we're not doing this just for for kicks. Well, maybe that's part of it. Uh, you know, we're we're doing it because it may match more closely with the real world because in the real world we don't just have one giant factory that's producing everything. Okay, we have a bunch of different firms that and we're distributing capital amongst all those different firms. Okay. And, the, and, and what's good about that is that we can produce a bunch of different types of products. Okay. We can produce a wide variety of products. So, um, uh, and, and people value variety, they value new products. Um, and that's part of what creates growth. Okay. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of what's going on there. All right. It's, it's not just because we want to make things more complicated, it's more realistic. Okay. And it allows us to think about technological growth. Okay. So, um, and if you want to think of, like, um, that splitting up of the capital essentially that means that you know if you integrate all those little xi's together linearly that should add up to the total amount of capital okay all right um yeah okay so so uh 
Yeah, well, I'll leave it at that for now. So, so the, the you know, basically we're taking k and splitting it up. So that integral, you know, that's that's an aggregation process. Okay. So, you, and if you look at this production function here, right, the, that integral from zero to a of x i to the alpha. Okay. So what does that mean? That means for each individual i along this line here, right, we have some x i. That's the amount of um, let's see. So so I guess uh xi is the yeah it's the amount it's a, how much that firm is is producing basically okay um how much that firm is producing okay and then uh you know you raise that to the alpha and then you integrate it all together okay so what does that mean in real terms okay well i mean really what it means is that uh it, it's representing how do you Kind of how valuable are those goods? Okay, so the fact that alpha is less than one means that for an individual good, you have decreasing returns. Okay, that that if, 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 as you increase xi, the marginal product is going to go down, which is a fairly common and I think reasonable assumption is that for a given good, uh, uh, the marginal product goes down as you consume more of it. Okay. Um, but what it also means for, for kind of the same mathematical reasons is that if you, <clears throat> let's say you have a certain amount of goods, okay, so, and, and you take, uh, let's see, so you, you take um, capital, okay, and you split it amongst all these firms and you produce a certain amount of goods in, in each product, I, okay. Uh, if you then increase the number of goods, so let's say double the number of goods and put half as much sort of, uh, effort into producing each of those goods, okay, so you're going to produce less of each good, right? But your marginal, like the marginal product for all of those is going to be higher, right? Because the marginal product is higher when you have, when you're at lower levels of production, okay? So essentially, um, what that what that also does is, is it makes people value variety, is that that first increment of the good is, is the best one, okay? Um, and so if you make more goods, you're, 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 you're produce you're consuming lots of each, but you're consuming more goods. Okay. And, and essentially this, this induces that, that love. Okay. So, so that's kind of the logic that decreasing returns to scale in the individual good also kind of implies that variety is good. Okay. Um, and that's sort of what powers this whole model. Okay. Is that, that people value having more, more different products to choose from. Okay. Um, yeah, and so obviously, you know, some some products are more important than others. I mean, it, it we, water is not in this model because you know, well, water is extremely important, you know, and it, 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 you know, I guess you don't spend that much in water, but it, it it's very important. Okay, but you think about like housing, extremely important. Um, you spend a large fraction on it, so it's it's that's uh, here everything is kind of on equal footing. All of these excises are just sort of added together, which which is um, the simplification it, it doesn't change much but but you know so it's, it, this is a world where sort of think about like all the goods are, are sort of on an equal footing okay um okay so then let me uh make sure i'm, I'm following the slides correctly here one second okay so then um all right, so so here's how we're gonna do this. All right, so uh, let's put a page here. So so uh, we need we need to think about this carefully. Okay, so so let's review what's happening though. Is that there's these individual firms that are producing these these XI goods. Okay, they're gonna sell them. Okay, to some firm that aggregates them all together and produces fine a lot of it. Okay. So the you know the you know, basically the the individual firm I. Okay, this firm I is going to uh, essentially um, rent some capital. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna rent a certain amount of capital, uh, basically X I. Okay, and that's gonna sort of linearly produce. Well, it's gonna produce X I. Okay, it's gonna produce if you rent one unit of capital you're able to produce one unit of, of this good I, okay? Um, and then they're gonna sell that to a final 
uh, a firm that produces this final good and turns all those xi's into y. Okay, so you can think about. Um, so I guess it's really like a bunch of different xi's are going in to to produce y. So you can think about um, uh, this final good aggregation firm is like a Walmart or a Target. Okay, so they're taking all this stuff. Or I mean, actually, Amazon is probably the best example. So they're taking all this stuff and, and aggregating it together. They're providing the, the sort of the front end user experience, uh, uh, transport, delivery, logistics, all that. Okay, so you can think about that as as sort of that end. Okay, and, and we're we're kind of saying that they're they're somewhat competitive. Okay, so obviously Amazon is a big player, but they do face competition from from the WalMarts and the Targets of uh, the world. Okay, so um, so that's the basic idea. Okay, and and. And to do that, you know, we, we, we need to think carefully about how these markets work. Okay. Because, um, you know, they're going to, you need prices, right? So you need to, to be specific about how these markets are constructed. Okay. Um, and what we're going to say, okay. So, so these, uh, these individual eyes, so this is like firm I, okay. They're a monopolist at producing I, at, at producing good XI. Okay. So um they, you know, one way to think about it, okay, is that they'll say, okay, look, we're gonna we're gonna post a price, PI, okay, for our good. And you know, if you final good, the the the, the that's firm I post a price PI for their good. And then the, the firm that combines these all together, like Amazon or Walmart, says, okay, well, your price is PI, we're going to buy XI and sell that to people. I mean, we're going to buy XI and turn it into Y and sell that to people. Okay. So, so uh, you know, basically, if they choose some PI, that's going to lead to some value for XI, how much they actually sell. Right. And what's that? That's a demand function. Right. You, 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 it, you, you, it tells you how much are you going to sell if you choose price P. Okay. Um, and so the question is, what does that demand function look like? Okay. So you can think about this as uh, some function, let's say XI of PI. So you put in a price, you get out how much you're going to sell. Right. And if you know how much you're going to sell, then you know what your revenues are PI times XI. Right. So re revenues will be. PI times XI, your cost. So I'm gonna, I, I, I didn't mention this before, but basically because you're renting that capital, I'm gonna say there's some rental rate R times how much capital you're renting. So your, your cost is gonna be R times XI. And so that means your profit is just, well, profit is revenue minus cost, right? So, and I'm gonna call that pi I, pi for profit P um, is gonna be PI XI minus R times XI, or if you want to combine it, PI minus R, your price margin, your price minus marginal cost, times XI, right? So so for these guys, marginal cost is R, okay? So you, you have to rent that capital and you, you rent them, you know, it literally could be rent for a building, okay? Uh, or maybe it's a machine uh, uh, of some sort, okay? Um, you're renting that capital, you're producing linearly, okay? So one unit of capital produces one unit of good, and then you sell it to this final good aggregation firm. Okay. So you can think about it as you choose the price. They say, okay, well, that's the price. Here's how much we want to buy. Okay. And presumably they're going to buy less if you set a higher price. That's a standard. And that's going to be an outcome of, of what we find. Okay. Um, so you set a price and then you, you're told what's the XI that you they're, they're going to buy. You'll produce exactly that much because why would you, you wouldn't want to waste anything. So you would produce exactly that much. And so you know your costs and you know what your revenues are going to be. Okay. So, so it, what I'm saying is it comes down to a choice, a single choice, which is PI from that you can infer profit. Right. And so then you can choose PI to maximize your profit. Okay. Um, you can kind of flip it around a little bit and you can say, well, well, I want to choose X. I want to choose how much I produce. And I'll say, Amazon, I'm producing this much. How much do you pay me for all of it? And that, that, that's effectively, they're telling you PI, right? So you can, you can do inverse demand or you can do demand. It turns out that they're equivalent. And in that case, it would be some function PI of XI. You say, if I want to sell XI units of goods, what's the price I'm going to get for it? Or how much would I have to charge? Those are equivalent. It's just, are you mapping from A to B or B to A? 
Okay, those, those returns that are, are, are going to be equivalent. And you can go through the same logic of how that determines revenues and costs and hence profits, basically like that. Okay, so um, you can do either one. Okay, so so that that's how the the that's the the decision that firm I is making. And out there, there's a ton of different firm I's from ranging from zero all the way up to A. Okay, and so when I say zero to A, I mean like there's a continuum of firms. Zero, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.12, 5, 7, 8. There's a continuum of firms, okay, from zero to A, okay? And the only reason we do that is is for mathematical tractability and also to make it so that one firm doesn't have uh, the ability to influence market outcomes at the aggregate level, okay? So there's none of these monopolist I, little I firms um, has a has, uh, aggregate power. None of them are like GE or anything like that. They're all just little firms. What they choose to produce isn't going to change the course of history or the world. They're just making this little choice, but those little choices aggregate up to big things. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So that, that's, that's the world from the perspective of these individual, these individual firms. Okay. And remember, you know, these, uh, where are we here? Okay. So these, you know, these firms, they're, they're getting a capital, okay, then they're they're selling it to this final good firm, and then that's that's what produces output. Okay. But but there's a bit of a chicken and the egg problem here. Okay, because they need to know if they choose a price P, how much are they gonna be able to sell? To make this whole decision, they need to know this in um this demand function, X XI of Fiat. Okay. So we need to go one step up. We need to talk to the manager, okay? In this case, the final good producer, okay? So we need to go one step up, all right? And, and say, well, what is that function? That function is essentially a choice of the final good producer, right? Because the, the, you, you go to the final good producer, Amazon, let's say, say, my price is PI, how much you want to buy? That, that's a choice that's, how much to buy is a choice that's made by the final good producer, okay? So we need to solve the final good producer problem first, and then go back with our armed with our X, our, our demand function basically, and solve the intermediate, and then and that will be good. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. All right, so let's think. So we we want to think about the final goods producer, so called Amazon. Okay, or Walmart, whatever. Um, okay, so remember they're they're operating this sort of technology. Okay, they're operating a technology that lets them hire labor and buy a bunch of goods, buy a bunch of excise, and arrange them in a store, either physical or virtual, and 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 uh, generate sort of what some composite final output. Why? Why is GDP? Why is what we're producing? Why is it what people consume? Okay, that's that's the, the the end goal in some sense is is GDP. Okay. Um okay, so then well, well you know what are they gonna do? Well if you think about what's their profit, okay? So they're they're gonna maximize profit too, like all the firms in this model. Okay. So it's a profit, so I'm gonna call it capital pi. So it's like pi but bigger. All right. Um Kind of looks like one of those Shinto shrines. So it's uh, going to be what? Well, it's going to be how much they produce their revenue. Okay, which is why. Okay, so I'm going to assume that they they the price of the final good is like one. Okay, All right, and they're just selling. So their revenue is just how much they produce. Okay, so their revenue is going to be y, which is alpha one minus alpha from zero to a. Okay. That's made the revenue. And they, they have costs. Okay. They got to buy all those XIs. And so that's what's that going to look like? It's going to look like this PI times XI, the integral. Right. So each XI says, here's my price PI. And the final good producer chooses how much to buy XI. And their cost then is PI times XI for that I. And then they do that for every good. Uh, and so that's the integral over that. Okay. So that's, that's their cost. Their cost is just the revenue of these intermediates, right? Because they're, that's it's, it's a zero sum. They're paying them for, for these goods. Okay. So, 
So that that capital pie there is they're you know they're choosing every single how much to buy of every single good given a report of what each individual producer is charging right so they're given every single pi and their choice is every single xi okay so so what we need to think about is they they're choosing xi okay that failed we're gonna try again. They're choosing xi optimally. So they're thinking, what, what's the derivative of pi with respect to xi? And they're gonna set that to zero. Right? So anytime you wanna maximize something, almost anytime you wanna maximize something that's well behaved, you, you take a derivative and set it to zero. That's where it choose the maximum. It might also be a minimum, hopefully not. In this case, it's gonna be the maximum. So we'll just go with that, okay? So um, yeah, and, and you can see, right? Um, for an individual specific xi, say i number 0.1357, um, that is gonna give you a certain function, okay? And, and essentially at, you know, at zero, when you choose xi equals zero, you're not, you're not making anything with that xi, okay? Um, as you increase it, initially the marginal, because of that alpha, because of this alpha here, the, you know, let's say alpha is half, that marginal uh, product is an infinite, whereas the cost is, is PI, so it's finite. So that initial derivative is, is very high. And over time, decreasing marginal product, okay? You're producing less and less output with that XI. Your costs are constant still though. So you're eventually gonna turn over and, and start losing money. Not losing money, but making less money, okay? So there's gonna be some single maximizing point here, okay? So what does this derivative look like? We're going to get L, let's try that again. L, L is a constant in, in XI. So remember, this is, this is an integral over all the XIs. So in some sense, I'm being a little sloppy with notation here, right? Because I'm integrating over every single XI from zero to A. Here I'm taking the derivative with respect to a particular XI, okay? But I'm still using the, the, the letter I just because it's it's easier. Okay, so when I take the derivative this with respect to a specific XI, I'm just gonna pick up that. Because right? remember the an integral is just like you're adding together a bunch of stuff, right? So if I do it with a particular XI, I'm just gonna pick up that one XI. So I'll get like alpha XI to the alpha minus one. Okay. All right. Uh minus what? Same thing with the integral. I'm only gonna pick up that one XI. So I'll just get PI here. There is, there is respect to XI of PI, XI is PI, all right? And that should be zero. Okay, so that gives me an equation, okay? And in fact, immediately that gives me that PI should be equal to this thing here. Let's put the alpha out front, uh, alpha, alpha one minus alpha, XI is the alpha minus one. And you can simplify that a little bit more to alpha, Combine the fractions, so you're going to get L over XI to the one minus alpha. Okay. All right. So summarizing, you know, PI is equal to L over XI to the one minus alpha. Oops, forgot alpha there. Okay, we got it. We got that constant alpha there too. But let's say that that's important. Okay. Um, now, let's think about this. What does this mean? Um, so, as a, as a demand, uh, sorry, as a, this is a, uh, oops, okay. So, this is actually the inverse demand function, okay? I guess originally I motivated this, we want to find the demand function. So, we, we can always find the demand function from the inverse demand function by inverting it. The inverse of the inverse demand function is, turns out, the demand function, okay? So, you know, this, this function here says PI is some function of XI. We want to get XI is some function of PI. Okay, so to do that, you, know, you divide by alpha, invert that power. Okay, and what you're going to get is... Uh, well, you're going to get L times alpha over PI to the 1 over 1 minus alpha. Okay, um, let me show that. That's correct. Yeah. So, so I just inverted that function. I did, I did a couple steps 
in my head there, which I think are correct. Uh, so you're gonna, if you just invert that function, you're gonna get x as a function of pi. Okay, so this is also important. But I, what I really wanna hammer home is that these two are equivalent. You know, it's just, do you map from pi to x? I or from x to pi? Turns out it's the same thing. Okay, so um, so let's let's focus on the right one though. Okay, because that's kind of how we motivated things initially. Um, uh, time, damn it. Okay, well, yeah, you know, I, I ended up talking about the uh, homework, and doing the OMETs for a bit. So, uh, okay, let me let me let me give you some parting thoughts. Okay, because that went a little quicker than I thought. First, let me interpret this, and then, we, and then I'll give you some parting thoughts. Interpretation. This is the demand function. The higher the price that this intermediate charges, they say I'm charging a million bucks per, per unit. Well, they're not gonna buy that much. Okay, so the higher the price they charge, the less this final good Amazon character is gonna buy. That makes sense, okay? Uh, and as the price goes to zero, they're gonna buy just a tremendous amount. Okay, maybe that makes less sense, but roughly speaking, it makes sense, okay? So um, that's good, okay? And so then now when the, when the firm I is gonna make that choice, they're gonna say, okay, well, I can sell a lot, um, and make, you know, for a low price, but maybe I'll make it up in quantity and, and that's one way to go. Or maybe I could sell a small amount and just get really high price for each one. Maybe that's another way to go. Okay. So there's going to be some optimal price that they choose given their cost structure are. Okay. So we some optimal price that'll determine their profits. And then once we know their profits, we can think about, well, what's the value of creating a new good and getting that profit stream. Okay. Okay. And there you can think about more like you're a startup create this new type of profit, uh, new type of product, and then you start getting this stream of profits, okay? So that's gonna be the logic, and then all of that, those incentives will determine how 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 fast are we creating new products, which will determine the rate of economic growth, okay? And we'll see that um, next class. Hopefully we can finish this all up next class, okay? So that's the plan, all right? Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, and that, that's, I guess that's what I have so far. Uh, off sellers are, uh, in a bit. Okay, basically now. Okay, so if you got questions about this stuff or about the uh, uh, the new project, let me know. Otherwise, I'll um, see you guys on Thursday. Thank you.